Hi guys, um, we're going to read chapter 17 um, in the Bridge Home. Thanks for joining me. And here we go. <clears throat> you became a businesswoman. I'll go to the waste man and meet you back at the bridge, Arul said. You two should go and see the nice part of the beach with Muthu. Don't you want me to come and keep an eye on the scales to make sure the waste man doesn't cheat us? Muthu said. I'll be fine, Arul insisted. The girls are new to the city, and they deserve to see something nice after all the hard work. So Muthu led us to what he called the rich section of the beach, where we could see sand dunes instead of trash hills, and my lungs filled with the welcome scents of salt and spray. We strolled along the walkway between <clears throat> the road and the, and the beach, past push carts piled high with corn and peanuts and hawkers selling multicolored plastic balls and cricket bats. Flimsy kites, toys, dolls, pinwheels. Balloon, you said hopefully, green balloon. Not enough money, I said. Money, you furrowed your brows thoughtfully. Money? You take a balloon from someone, you have to give them money, Muthu tried to explain, as I'd tried so many times before. When we take bananas, we give the vendor our money. People sell their things for money. Sell necklaces, you said? Money? Yes. I was thrilled you'd understood. That's how money works. Sell necklaces. You sounded very pleased with yourself. Get money, get balloon. What a good idea. Muthu patted you on the back. We could sell your necklaces. Would anyone buy them? I asked. <clears throat> Muthu gestured at a vendor who was dozing in the shade of a push cart piled high with the ugliest plastic dolls I'd ever seen. If he's trying to sell those, why can't we try to sell her jewelry? So the two of you picked a spot on the walkway and arranged the six necklaces that you'd finished in a neat line. Necklaces for sale, Muthu sang out. Pretty bead necklaces. Groups of pedestrians bustled past without casting <clears throat> a glance in our direction. I was thinking we should give up when two girls walked by. They carried bags filled with books and looked old enough and well-dressed enough to be in college. How much? One of the girls pointed to a necklace with red beads in which you'd try your special loops and knots. 200 rupees, Muthu said. I nearly fainted. One, the girl said. Two, Muthu held firm. Three, you said. Did you just raise the price instead of lowering it? She smiled at you. Three, four, you said. My sister means 150 rupees, I said. Three, you sang. Three, four, five, six. Um, she's talking in hundreds, like 300, 400, 500, 600. I'd better pay before the price soars even higher, the girl laughed, and then fished in her bag for her money. I can't believe you're actually spending your money on that, the other girl exclaimed. What's 150 rupees, the nice girl said. These kids are cute and the necklaces are pretty. Pretty. You wrapped, around, <clears throat> you wrapped one around a finger and twirled it so the beads caught the sunlight. That's right. The girl slid her necklace over her head. Very pretty. We couldn't have asked for a better model. The girl's golden brown skin set off the beads, making them sparkle even more. We'll send some friends your way, she promised. Sure enough, another college girl came by soon, her pink sari swishing around her heels. There you are, I'll take one. Which one, I asked. Whichever, doesn't matter. 150, I handed over a pink one to match her sari. She gave 200, I returned the extra 50. Keep it, she said. We settled on 150, I said. We don't need charity. Do um, you know what charity is? Charity is when you um, give money to those who need it, but um, VG, she's um, not accepting any extra money. <clears throat> anyway, so let's see what happens. Um, you're not offended, are you? She sounded worried. I'm sorry. Not offended, I said. In less than an hour, you'd sold all but one necklace, and we earned a small fortune. You are a miracle, Ruku, I said. Your necklaces are worth their weight in gold. Golden roasted corn, Muthu said dreamily. Ruku is a miracle. Cutie, do you know that? Cutie opened his mouth wider like he was grinning in agreement. Balloon, you said. 
we walked with you to the balloon stand, though I worried about whether buying a balloon was really a good idea. Amma had bought us a huge balloon once, and we had fun with it until it burst and the loud noise set you off. But my worry dwindled when I looked at you. You know what the word dwindled means? Dwindled means um, to decrease, so become less. So her worry, her worries went down um, when she looked at her sister, Ruku. All right, standing erect, an open mouth smile spread wide across your face. You picked out a long green a long bottle green balloon. You gave, you give the money, Ruku. You earned it. I counted out the exact amount and put it into your outstretched palm. You handed over the money. I'd never seen you stand so tall before. That was something. No, that was everything. Alrighty. Um, and our exit taking question is on a scale of from one to 10 with one being terrible and 10 being awesome. How would you rate Ruku's day? Um, I would rate her day at like a nine because, um, she figured out a way to make money by selling the bracelet or the necklaces that she was already making. Um, and then she was able to use that money to get a balloon that she really wanted. So I gave her a rating a nine because she's having a pretty awesome day. Um, they're making the best of the situation that they're in. Um, I look forward to seeing what you would rate her day as, um, and thank you for joining me. Bye, see you for chapter 18.